Racism in the military. Does it exist? Absolutely. I want to applaud the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, the Sergeant Major of the Army, and the USFK Commander for making their public statements in regards to racism. They're leading from the front and not a lot of commanders and not a lot of leadership within the military want to do so in regards to this sensitive topic. Um, for those who don't know, if this is your first time tuning into my channel, I am a lieutenant in the United States Army. And ROTC is one of the three commissioning sources that produces the company and battalion and brigade commanders that you work for um, if you are in the military. And there is racism in the officer corps, unfortunately. I've seen it firsthand. I have experienced it. This is nothing that I'm just watching the news and on social media. This is something that I have personally experienced. I'll even give y'all a story. So back when I was in ROTC, I graduated from a historical black college. So everyone, every, every cadet I had was of African-American descent. And I was a squad leader at the time. I had a battle buddy who was also a squad leader in another platoon. However, in his squad, he had all the cadets from my school plus the black cadets from their school because it was it's a battalion mixed up of four different universities right so the squad leader then asks the first sergeant the cadet first sergeant because it's cadet ran everyone's a student he asked that cadet first sergeant why that was and he jokingly said oh it's just to keep you guys in the back where you belong because he was fourth squad leader now my battle buddy didn't find this joke funny he brought it to my attention and i'm like yeah i don't, I don't think it's funny either but me being the 19, 20 year old cadet I was, I didn't speak up and I didn't say anything. Now, that cadet first sergeant that made that racial comment, he's a lieutenant leading soldiers. In these, the times that we are in right now, he's probably not gonna say anything or address the issue because in his heart, it's not an issue. Maybe black lives don't matter in his head. I don't know. I'll even give you guys another example or a couple at that. So we have a cadet who looks like me, goes to a bar, he's underage, gets caught with the phony ID because he had a phony ID to get into the bar. The boss finds out what is his punishment. He gets cut from the program. No longer can commission as a U.S. Army officer. We have another cadet who doesn't look like me, right? Similar situation around the same time frame. Publicly intoxicated and also has an altercation with a campus safety officer. Punishment, all he has to do is give a speech at battalion formation at PT about underage drinking. Not exactly the same punishment, right? And I'm not out here pointing fingers because I've done my dirt. However, I had leadership within my chain of command that said, hey, I know you messed up, but I'm willing to work with you if you wanna get better. And he actually cared about my personal and professional my personal and professional development, excuse me. And he wasn't so quick to off with his head because of the way I look. Now, I'm not saying this, this situation was racially motivated, but this is how it looks from the outside looking in. And this is what a lot of people thought when that happened. So I'm not the only one. And I love that the army has programs set up to fight against it. But I'd be a liar to say that it doesn't exist. And being a military YouTuber, I felt it would be a disservice for me not to address this issue, being that I make videos now about the military. One, I'm in the military. Two, I'm black. And three, I'm an officer. So in two to three years, I will be a company commander. And I know my Joes are gonna want a leader who's not afraid to call out something when it's wrong. And I wanna challenge the other military YouTubers to do the same, but I know they're not. Many won't. I'm not saying you gotta make a whole video about it, but just know, let your Joes know that you understand that this is a problem. And if you fail to realize it's an issue, or if you just wanna ignore that it is, you're a part of that problem. I'll even give you guys another example. So my school is about 10 to 15 minutes away from the host school. We have PT four days out of the week, so almost every day. 
they used to give us a van that would transport us to and from and to classes because we do have an ROTC class and lab. They shortly cut that off, they said carpool. Now as a freshman at my college, you are not allowed to have a vehicle. And on top of that, the upperclassmen vehicles, they weren't exactly up to par. You know, I used to drive a, a green conversion van and the AC was broke, windows were broke. It looked like I was selling candy out of it. It was bad. All right, we, we, we not, we're not exactly driving Camaros and Ferraris. So we're missing PT because of lack of transportation. We're missing classes and labs because of lack of transportation. And every time we miss something, we get a negative counseling. So, you, you know, and at the commissioning ceremonies, the presidents of, of all the universities come together and they wonder, why is the diversity rate from all the, the new commissioned lieutenants? There's no black lieutenants. There's no minority lieutenants. But when you cut the, the resources from the predominantly African-American institution and you wonder why there's no African-American officers that are commissioning from these two schools, you really get to think like, is this racially motivated? Not saying it is, but this is how it looks. But anyway, y'all, I appreciate you guys tuning in. I just wanted to, to touch on this because this is a topic that nobody wants to talk about, but we have to have this discussion. And I want to thank the uh, the Army Barbie. I don't know if you even subscribed to me, but you made the, the video that really motivated me to make this video. So, yeah, I appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all tuning in. And I'm out.